Look familiar? More and more Canadians spend a lot of time with a cell phone seemingly glued to their head. But how safe is that? In a moment, I'll be talking with a scientist about the link between our phone use and our health. But first, how much do we even know about what cell phone providers recommend for users? We hit the streets to ask people, where do they keep their cell phones? I keep my cell phone in my pocket. In my purse. I keep it in my pocket. Some people use a clip. A I use it on my belt. But most don't. I just always keep it in my pocket or I keep my briefcase or my suit jacket or whatnot. I don't really have one of those clips. But have they read the fine print in the manuals that come with these phones? No. If you started using it, didn't have any time to actually read it. Did they know that a lot of them carry strongly worded advice like this? Went on a so small. When using an iPhone near your body for voice calls, keep it at least five eighths of an inch away from your body. The long-term effects of exceeding RF exposure standards might prevent a risk of serious harm. I'm shocked. Always wear a rim-approved holster, and if not, maintain a distance of at least 0.98 of an inch from your body. Yep, the Motorola manual has the same advice. Approved clip, eh? Or body harness. So 2.5 centimeters from your body when transmitting. So making a phone call, I have to keep it 2.5 centimeters, so I, I have to go like this when making a phone call? That doesn't make any sense. So if I want kids, I should keep my phone out over here? Not on the phone, not on the box, but inside the manual it says keep your phone away from your body. Why? Are you safe or you We tried to get to the bottom of what those precautions mean. We asked the makers of some of the top selling smartphones. The safety information outlined in RIMS manuals corresponds with standards followed by Industry Canada. Apple told us iPhone's radio frequency energy is well within the limits set by Industry Canada. But are they safe if we hold them right next to our heads or wear them on our bodies? Industry Canada says that the testing standards are based on numerous scientific studies and that devices must be tested with the accessories like a holster or clip if the manufacturer provides one. Still no answer to why we're told to hold them away from our bodies. So we take a look at those standards, and it turns out they're based on some assumptions. For example, the tests use a model called SAM. That stands for Standard Anthropomorphic Man. I'm, I know I'm not average. I know I'm kind of short for my height, but that seems kind of ridiculous. SAM is based on the size of top military recruits. Doesn't make any sense because the average person is not six foot two, 200 pounds. Percentage of Canadians six foot two or over, two percent. Percentage of Canadians 200 pounds or more, 18.1%. And there are no tests on what cell phone radiation does to kids. 17. 17 I don't blame the company, I blame the government for not making stringent regulations upon this that they have to actually follow. No one gives us a clear answer on whether it's safe to hold it next to your body. I'm actually going to keep my cell phone over here and I'm not going to actually have it on my body. But yeah, it didn't make any sense to me, but yeah, I'll definitely uh, see if I'm investing in a clip or something. I feel like calling my daughter now. Don't put your phones in your pocket. So those manuals are just one of the issues raised in a new book by Deborah Davis. She studies environmental effects, especially cancer risks. She's even shared a Nobel Prize with Al Gore. Her latest book reads like a conspiracy thriller full of nasty plot lines. She accuses the cell phone industry of covering up the dangers. I met up with her in Washington and started with the cautions in those cell phone manuals. So what does that mean that this is in here? It means that if you use the phone like that, you're not in compliance with the standards. But why don't they put it on the phone? Who's going to read? I never, didn't even know this was in here. Well, when I testified before the Senate, I called for warnings to be put on phones. Most people do not know that a cell phone is a small microwave radio. Most people do not know that microwave radiation at low doses over long periods of time has been linked to a variety of biological impacts and damage. In fact, just this spring, headlines after a huge research project from the World Health Organization told us not to worry. But what about the Interphone study? Among the Interphone team of investigators from 13 countries, some of the people aren't talking to one another. There's a big disagreement in that group. 
Davis says there are two big problems with the Interphone study. There's a conflict of interest because it was partly funded by the cell phone industry, and that most of the research doesn't look at heavy users, and the small parts that do found a doubling or even quadrupling of tumors. So are you suggesting science is for sale? It's more subtle than that. I'm suggesting that scientists always need research money. We do. And if you're getting paid very handsomely to do work, and you get to go to very nice places to present your findings. There's a kind of series of subtle incentives that are operating. But enough to not find an effect, to say, no, there's no effect? It's, it is uh, more complicated than that, frankly. But sometimes you can set up a study so that it's designed to fail. In her book, Davis says when negative effects are found, the cell phone industry goes out of its way to hide it. It's something I've heard before in stories that I've done here at CBC. In 1994, in Seattle, Henry Lai, with his study on rats, was one of the first to report that cell phone-like radiation damages DNA, seen as a first hint of cancer. When his work was reported, his funding dried up. The three and a half years, nothing happened. You wonder what's going on. A few years later, the head of the U.S. body that figures out how much cell phone radiation is acceptable reported a problem. When Om Gandhi published a report showing the brains of smaller adults and children absorb much more radiation than that big man Sam, his long and profitable ties with the defense and electronics industry came to an end. In Davis's book, Gandhi is quoted as saying, any time there's evidence of an effect, there are many others brought in to show that there is nothing. Also in the mid-90s, the Canadian and American cell phone industry gave a Washington-based scientist named George Carlo $28 million for research. He spent years telling people not to worry, until the end when he says his study started to show there was an effect. When uh, they found that we had findings of genetic damage and uh, increase in the risk of cancer, they cut off our money completely. Then, in 2002, Franz Edelkofer, who had been chief of research for the tobacco industry in Germany, was given millions of euros by the EU to test the hypothesis that cell phone exposure is safe. Edelkofer was shocked when results came back showing genetic damage, damage that was ten times more likely with the new, more powerful 3G phones. A few months later, Edelkofer was accused of fabricating his results. He's now battling what he calls an industry smear job. We reached him in Munich, Germany. The mobile phone industry has taken over some methods used by the cigarette industry in the United States for many, many years to hide the truth. You're suggesting a massive effort to make negative science go away. It's not that hard. The first thing you do is you don't fund the science at all. It's really tough to do research. And there are lots of important questions we can study. So why would anybody in their right mind want to go into a field that's dangerous to get into? But still, many do. Health Canada says the weight of evidence from animal, cell culture, and human studies does not indicate that the energy emitted by cell phones is strong enough to cause serious health effects. Well, what about cancer? We did our best to find all the lab studies done around the world in the last two years on whether there is any link to cancer. We found about 15. Almost half did not find any harmful effect, but a bit more than half did. Check this out. Two studies from Italy and one each from China, Turkey, India, Austria, Croatia, Sweden, and Germany all showing a biological effect from cell phone radiation. So you're afraid this could be as bad as tobacco? I think it could turn out to be worse than tobacco for one simple reason. We've never had a situation where all people smoked. Today, around the world, almost all people are using cell phones. But cell phones have been around for a long time and we're not seeing any big spike in brain tumors. That's true, but cell phones have not been around for a long time with heavy use. In, in fact, 10 years ago, less than half of all Americans and Canadians used a cell phone at all, at all. Now, almost all of us do use them. If it takes 20 years for a risk to become evident in the population, if it takes 30 or 40 years, we won't have proof that cell phones are dangerous in the human population until I'm dead.
While there is no huge spike in tumors, there have been small increases reported. We're seeing effects with hearing. We're seeing tumors on the hearing nerve. We're seeing tumors on the cheek. We're seeing tumors in the brain, right around the areas. And we're seeing tumors on the side of the head where people most often hold their phone. And some of those results are from Davis herself. While director of the Cancer Institute at the University of Pittsburgh, she wrote a paper that showed a significant increase of brain tumors among Americans in their 20s. She says she was not given the funding to continue that work. You know, writing this book, you used to be at a university. You're not there anymore. Have, have you been sidelined because of your speaking out on this? Uh, I decided that it would be better for me to leave the university to work on this issue, that it would be better for me to do this work without the constraints that I faced as the director of the Center for Environmental Oncology at the University of Pittsburgh Cancer Institute. Davis stepped down as director of that center last December. The university's strategic partnership with Verizon, the wireless company, continues to flourish. The university didn't want to talk to us about her departure either. So no backlash against you? You haven't been made uh, to suffer for, for speaking out on this? You talk about a massive lobby on this issue. You'll have to talk to the university. I don't really have anything, any other comment to provide at this time. But she's not shutting up about cell phones. Because I think this could become the most important public health threat of our generation. I'm a grandmother now. You know, I've been in science for uh, more than three decades. Uh, I, I don't have much to prove. But I do feel an obligation to let people know that this is a very, very serious problem. And we had better get serious about addressing it. If you want to make up your own mind on all of this, we will be posting the information we've gathered from both sides on our website. Follow the links at cbc.ca slash the national.